Hello and welcome to Sailing Magic Carpet. Normally when Aladino and I are out sailing we can't go to a bakery every morning and get our fresh bread and so I always make our bread on board Magic Carpet and I think now that the world has gone into this crazy time and everyone is in quarantine learning how to bake your own bread is uh, perhaps more useful than ever and so I'm going to show you how we bake bread because we do not have an oven. I just have a stove top and I have a frying pan and I make really good bread with those two things. So let me show you how I do it. For this recipe, you will need some flour, any kind, white, uh, whole wheat, whatever you can find at your local store, some yeast, some dry yeast, some salt, some sugar, some water, which I would assume you have, and a this is not the important part. A thick bottomed frying pan. You don't want a thin bottomed frying pan because that will not work. And you also need to have a lid. Aladino, can you pass me the lid of our frying pan? Oh, okay, it doesn't have to be with your feet. Anyway, a lid. I'm filming. So the first thing I should tell you is that I'm not particularly choosy about what kind of dough I make. So bread is a lot more forgiving than I think a lot of people think it is. So you can actually use any bread recipe and then you can cook it on your stove top. I'll show you my recipe that I usually use just because it's very simple. It's two, two, two. So that means I use two cups of water, two tablespoons of sugar, and two teaspoons of yeast to get everything started. So I'll start with two of these uh, for water. And because we don't have any hot water, I always warm it up on the stove top just a little bit. And here is the Dini advice. Don't um, use boiling water, because I think the first time I made bread, the water was too hot and I killed all the little yeasties. So they didn't do anything and we ended up having quite the brick. But yeah, Maya knows better how to do this. So you want the water to be warm enough to sort of just dip your finger into comfortably. Right now this is too hot, so I'll let it just sit a little bit, but while I let it um, kind of cool down, I will add the sugar. So two big teaspoons of sugar and just kind of stir this around. And this helps the yeast to activate. So the water has cooled down enough now um, for me to add the yeast. I just sprinkle the yeast on top of the water. I don't actually stir it in. Um, all right, honestly, that was unexpected. The yeast sank. Normally it sits on the surface, but I think this is like a heavier kind of yeast. That's one of the side effects of traveling a lot and changing countries a lot, is uh, you can't sort of have your favorite brands of things to buy. So anyway, I'm sure this will still work. I also recommend making your bread in the evening. I find that I often end up doing this because I don't usually get up early enough to want to make bread because by the time it's finished it won't be until afternoon anyway. But I make it in the evening and either I bake it just before I go to bed or I actually leave the dough overnight in the fridge and then in the morning you can bake it. Both are totally fine. Um, but also the plus side of doing the bread in the evening is that you get to drink wine while you wait for the dough to rise, which is not a bad deal. Cheers, amore. Cheers. So the yeast is working very, very well actually, I'm really happy. So just wait until it's sort of 
foamed up and creates bubbles on the surface and when you watch it, it you should actually be able to see it kind of all bubbling up and then when it's created this sort of foamy layer on top then you know it's done now it's just a matter of adding flour and salt so I just sprinkle in mm, quite a lot if there's any professional bakers out there they probably hate me but trust me it works and it's good okay um, and like I said you can have you can use any recipe. Uh, it's more a matter of how you cook it, which we are getting to. Okay, so I added that, and then also as a first step, I always add um, a little bit of salt. Mm, one of those. The next part is just to whiz it all up with a fork. I know if you're at home, usually people will have like a bread machine for this part, but it's really not difficult to do by yourself. And the first time you add flour, it should still be pretty wet, pretty wet dough, and then you gradually add more flour until you get to the consistency that you would like. So then I just keep stirring it, and really the goal here is to make a dough that is able to be formed into a shape, but that is not too dry either. You want it to still be a little bit sticky. Now everyone makes bread a little bit differently, and um, like the Italians I believe make like a really wet dough every time, and other places will have like a really heavy dough where you can stick your fingers in and pull them out and they come out dry, like no dough sticks to it because the dough is so dry. I go for something a little bit in between. So right now we're getting close-ish, but it's still really tacky as you can see, so I'll add a little bit more flour. So now, this is really looking like a dough. I don't think I'll add much more flour because like I said, I do prefer my dough to be on the wetter side. And this is looking pretty good. So I just kneaded it up with a fork a little bit more because I hate having to clean off my fingers when they're sticky with bread dough. Um, the more you knead it, the better. But I find that I don't knead it as much as maybe I should. And it's still very good. <laughs> The theme of this whole video is just do, do whatever, whatever you, you want. Do whatever you want and put some bread on the stove and you'll enjoy it. So now it is time to leave the bread dough to work its magic. This usually takes about an hour or so and you want to cover it, leave it in a warm place and let it rise. Now Right now we're in France and it's actually starting to warm up for the spring, so I'm not too concerned about the temperature. When it was colder and we were coming up the canals, we were using our engine and so in the evenings the engine would still be warm, so I'd open the engine compartment and I'd leave the bread to sit in there uh, and to fluff up. But now we don't have to do that, so all I'm going to do is cover it. Uh, and the only reason why you want to cover it is to prevent the top of the dough drying out. And the next time I talk to you, it will probably be dark out, and I will show you how to bake bread in a pan on the stovetop. So the dough rose quite a lot, which is perfect, and now I'm going to put some flour into the frying pan. Now this is a very important step, to put flour into the frying pan so it doesn't stick. I've tried with oil and stuff in the past and it doesn't really work. If you have a cast iron pan, I imagine that might be better than this thing. You want to kind of flip it over and coat every single available surface in flour to try and prevent it sticking as much as possible. So now we've got to the real heart of the matter, the real heart of making bread on a stove without an oven. We have a dough and now it's in the thick bottomed frying pan and now we have to turn the stove onto the lowest heat 
we can possibly make it go. And we need to cover the frying pan with a nice tightly fitting lid. And then we will put those two things together, the stove on low heat and the frying pan with the nice tightly fitting lid. And after about an hour or so, we should have a bread. And now we wait. So um, I don't really time it. I'm a big proponent of just checking frequently. But usually I let it bake until the top part is a little bit, it won't really get hard like it would in an oven, but it just looks a little bit cooked. Kind of like when you're cooking pancakes and the top looks a little bit cooked and then you flip it. So it's a similar thing with this. And now the behind the scenes where Aladino goes clean all the flour everywhere. I did not get flour everywhere. <laughs> I really wish that you guys were here and could smell this because it smells so good in Magic Carpet right now. Um, so you can see that the top, it looks a little bit cooked. Um, it's not brown and it won't get brown with this method until you flip it, that is. But I'm gonna have a look at what it's, uh, what it's like on the bottom and see how it's going. It's been, how long has it been? I don't know, I kind of go until you start smelling that aroma of bread. Mm. And then once you start smelling the bread, then you know you have to look at it. Ready to have a taste of Mori? Mm -hmm. Tell in me there's a chance. 